Welcome to our celebration of summer here on Mission Park Cares. You know, and today we're going to hear from the Youth Orchestra of San Antonio to celebrate all the graduating seniors right here in San Antonio, Texas. Then we're headed to the kitchen at La Fagata for a mouth-watering surf and turf experience. And if you're looking for a family outing right here close to home, we're going to show you a super cool spot. But first, we want to share a story about a San Antonio legend that founded Mission Park and some of San Antonio's most historical neighborhoods. And I'm proud to say that's my great-grandfather. I want to tell you the story about my great-grandfather. Where we're standing today is one of the incredible things that he and a group of business people back in the, just after the turn of the century, they created this beautiful architecture and this church known as Laurel Heights Methodist Church. You know, I'm so impressed with the way that the buildings were developed, the way that this porch drains off the side, the way that the ceilings are, the windows, they're stunning, they're absolutely gorgeous. They came from New York. So much of this architecture went into, uh, quite frankly, Mission Burial Park South. What was really innovative about this entire area as he developed Beacon Hill, how did you get there from downtown? It was, a long, it was a long drive, or a long walk, I'll promise you that. What he did is he brought in a trolley that came all the way down the street, right to the middle where all these palm trees are, down to an area called Beacon Hill. Beacon Hill was a subdivision that he developed from, from scratch, from raw land. And that's how he developed the ability to have the resources to build and develop Mission Burial Park South for his wife as a wedding gift, Clara. In addition to building a beautiful, beautiful church in a neighborhood that needed a church, quite frankly, at the time, not only did he create this and create the beauty spot in San Antonio Mission Burial Park, he created so many and worked on so many of the homes that were here in San Antonio, from the Pearl, the Mr. Kaler's house, to so many large homes that were developed in, in this area. This is where the business leaders of San Antonio continue to come to, as well as families came in here. And he did everything for a rhyme and a reason. Latitude, longitude, uh, like New York City. It was laid out that way. And this developed into a thriving neighborhood. And it still is thriving today. And so many of these homes he built, he developed, and he worked with all the leading architects here in San Antonio to develop a neighborhood just north of San Antonio where nobody was going. Mr. Chambers was only 56 years old when he passed away. And he passed away at the front gate of Austin Memorial Gardens, which was a duplicate of Mission Burial Park South. During his lifetime, it's incredible the amount of building and construction that he did in just 56 years. We are continuing that tradition to continue to build the way he built. He built it to last. He built it to be here forever and ever and ever. He built it to be, quite frankly, fireproof. and and. He was just an incredible gentleman who did so many things in only 56 years. Here's Reverend Matthew Wise with the blessing for all of San Antonio. And afterwards, we're gonna celebrate some lives well lived. In these times of struggle nationally and globally, one of the prayers that has brought me the most comfort and has served as both a reminder and an inspiration to me is a prayer out of our Book of Common Prayer for the whole human family. Let us pray. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion upon the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Dick, the youth orchestras of San Antonio has changed the lives of hundreds and hundreds of kids. And beyond that, these young kids make some incredible music. Listen to this. My name is Ben Hackett. The mission of Youth Orchestras of San Antonio, the premier orchestral experience for youth citywide, is to enhance education, enrich the community, and transform lives by pursuing excellence in classical music in a stimulating, nurturing, and fun environment that's equally accessible to all youth. And the, the short way that we say that is that Yosa changes kids' lives through music, and that's the goal every year is for kids to come into Yosa and have life-changing experiences through music. So we do our best to make sure that any kid who wants to be part of music has that opportunity. And to do that, we need to offer financial assistance. The gifts we receive from donors are, of course, the main way that we can open the door to new families getting involved in YOSA. And as we come out of the pandemic, we're excited about growing our enrollment and bringing new kids into this exciting opportunity.
Now it's time to pay tribute to loved ones that we'll cherish forever. Kristen, one of the things I like the most about La Fagata is the salsa. It makes everything incredible. I agree. Let's get into the kitchen and see what they're cooking. Hi, Kristen and Dick. How are you doing? We are cooking today uh, shrimp campiqueña, campiqueña with camarón. We uh, just have a very special sauce where we cook our shrimp, our camarón on it. So our salsa de mesa, it's made with fresh tomatoes that we roast it out in, in house, white onion, tomatillo, tomatillo verde, serranos, peppers. To make our shrimp sauce or camarón sauce, we add on to the mix garlic, manteca or lard, vegetable lard, more salt, and we blend ancho and guajillo peppers that we uh, let them dry, then we fry, quick fry and chop. I mean, our sauce, it's, it's spicy, it's fresh, and it tastes homemade. And now let's get cooking. This is our gas grill. I'm gonna start with our tampiqueña into the grill. And we have three camarones, three shrimp, a quick grill just to give that char flavor into the camarón. And then we're gonna finish it into the, our sauce. No, the shrimp, it will take less time. It's just less than a minute each size. We're gonna turn it and it's gonna cook in about five minutes total. Our meat, if you're gonna have it uh, medium rare or rare or medium, depends on how the customers, we normally serve it medium and it will take about seven minutes to cook. So it's very close, but the tampiqueña will take more time in the grill and this while the shrimps are getting into the sauce. So we have also our uh, green onions on the grill to get charged. We're gonna flip over those shrimps. Now we're gonna slightly season it with our uh, secret mix seasoning. When I throw our salt, that's a sizzling you like to get when you get food into your pan. I'm gonna transfer our shrimp into the sauce. I preferly like to give a, a cross mark in our tampiqueña. So when you see it on the grill, on the plate, it has a nice char grilled into the meat that gives the flavor, but it also gives some looks. This is made with a skirt, outside skirt, uh, beef, obviously, and we develop our own seasoning. It has a lot of love and thoughts, and it has uh, some cumin and has some oregano, some salt, pepper, and uh, the rest is secret. So as you can see, the shrimps are 
almost cooked. You have a, a nice tender and soft camarón with a very spicy flavor, but not so spicy and piquant. Uh, special sauce, the camarón. We're gonna turn out a little bit our green onions. And then we, unless the customer requires a different temperature, we like to present our beef, uh, our steaks so of beef, medium rare, into the table to medium. So by the time it takes another five to six minutes, sometimes to go from uh, the grill to uh, the line, and then another two minutes to the table, the meat still nice and juicy. So now let's plate the dish. We have our plate already with our ranchero beans and the rice, Mexican rice. We're gonna put our tampicani and ice in the middle. And let's make sure that we get all this nice sauce into the shrimps and in the tampicani. Just all that love that goes into this sauce. And we finish it off with our grilled green onion, our Mexican rice, and here we have Tampiquenia Camarón, beef Tampiquenia with shrimp. La Fagata truly is an original, but speaking of originals, here's a San Antonio Chamber Choir with a beautiful message. But first, we're going to honor the memory of those that are near and dear to our heart.
Dick, did you know that the San Antonio River actually starts at the campus of Incarnate Word? Thank goodness. And you know that there's a great family outing with a bunch of trails behind the Incarnate Word. It's incredible. Now tell me the history. How did you get involved in the sanctuary, the Blue Hole Sanctuary? I volunteered here at Headwaters in Incarnate Word and had been involved ever since and became chairman of the board about a year and a half ago. It's been very rewarding. It's been fun. So could you tell me a little history about where we are in the Blue Hole? What's it all about? The Blue Hole is just one of about 500 springs right up and down the creek here. Uh, and it, it, it's, it's, it's a spring system. And we've seen pictures of where the Blue Hole is, the artesian pressure from the, from the Edwards Aquifer forcing the water up 20 feet high in the air. Life started with the uh, humans coming to this part of Texas because of the water, because of the spring system here, and we can say because of the Blue Hole. This is a very wild space, but where are we? It is in the heart of the city, but it's hard to find, as, as you said, and that is, that's gonna be one of our biggest challenges. Now that we've developed these, this trail system and opened it up, uh, we want people to come. So. Is the sanctuary open year-round? I mean, can we come anytime, and what's the best time to come? It's open year-round. The best time to come is when it's cooler. <laughs> uh, right now, it's a little hot. Uh, if you come early in the morning, it's okay, or late in the evening. But I would suggest you come starting maybe in October. Uh, the winter time is delightful here. It's, it's open year-round, and we welcome people to come. I realize you probably have seen every square inch of this property. But what is your favorite place? Where do you like to visit the most? We've developed these trails and they go, uh, primarily we, we've mapped them out where they would pick out the great big oak trees. And some of these oak trees are four and 500 years old. And you, you get back into, into the area where these huge oak trees are and it's just magnificent. And, and my, what I like to say about when I get to one of those places around these unbelievable oak trees. It's a spiritual forest. And for me, it's a spiritual place that I can feel peaceful and relaxed and, and just sort of, you, you can just think about uh, life on a, a much slower level because we get to going too fast. We welcome everybody from this region uh, to come out here and, and see, what's, see what beautiful property this is. Thank you again for being here and, and we're excited and we hope that many people come out and and again, we're here at the Blue Hole, right outside of Incarnate Word. Last week, we celebrated Father's Day here on Mission Park Cares. And we had more requests for so many fathers than we could fit in just one show. So right now, here's one more special tribute to dads that will never be forgotten.
want to thank all those family members who honored their dads with us today. And if you have a loved one you'd like to remember on the show, just go to missionparks.com and click on Mission Park Cares to find out how you can share. And next week will be our special 4th of July celebration, and we look forward to spending the holiday with you. It's an honor to bring you the best that San Antonio has to offer, because at Mission Park, it's our mission to care.